start things off about where we are and what it means to have this man sitting next to you. I can't describe it. I, I wouldn't know where to begin. Um, just the fact that he's here and he's going to be back with his family is, is all that really matters. Um, he gets to decide what it means and, and how it means to him. Um, yeah. His uh, his four year suffering of, of being wrongfully incarcerated is over, and um, so he gets to decide what it means and, and how he gets to go on with his life. What, in a nutshell, the legal ra wrangling that you've gone through to get us to this point? Uh, you know, other lawyers did this and failed. You didn't. Well, uh, a lot of people helped me. A lot of people worked with me. This entire office uh, was here for me for the past four years. Uh, it's not just myself. Um, I may be his attorney of record, but uh, everybody here in the public defender's office helped me and worked with me. So it, it's not just about me, Mr. Fox, or anybody else. Jonathan, you've had a really bad lawyer, and you've had a really good lawyer. What has this man meant to you? He's meant everything. It's it's. It's crazy because the, the first attorney I had, he it would, would just fight me tooth and nail. And, and Mr. Pavitt, we would go through ideas about how, how to best deal with the situation at hand. And we, we've done what we can, and, and, and it's been everything to me. Where did your first lawyer fail you? I would say at, at the preliminary phase. It, it, there's a lot that he could have done that Mr. Pavitt seen, and, and there's a lot that should have been done that wasn't. Tell me about last night after we saw you. Where did you go? What did you do? Um, Fill we, in the gap. We, of course, we. Uh, I needed to report to the probation office in Newport News as, as quickly as possible, and they were waiting on me. So uh, we decided to get a quick bite to eat McDonald's. And uh, I don't know exactly what McDonald's that was at. Um, then we went, um, went to the probation office and then went to Walmart, got some clothes, and I got a couple of stairs, but I didn't think it was because of who I was. I think it was because of what I was wearing at the time. Well, I mean, what was it like eating that cheeseburger? I mean, the first time, I mean, past four years, I'm be guessing it was a little better than prison it, food. It, it, the the cheeseburger was, was great. I had to stop eating the cheeseburger because the fries were getting cold, and, and <laughs> it was a, an Angus Swiss mushroom cheeseburger and it was pretty good it it was satisfying <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have preferred that he said the first thing I want to do is watch a Giants game <laughs> but he wanted to watch it eat a cheeseburger yeah. that's up to him did you get any sleep last night or did you not want to waste that first night I, I got an hour and a half of sleep last night I, that, that's the most I got I went in started checking email talking with a few friends that were still online um, I had 1,937 messages on my email account, so I had to go through all the junk mail and uh, start uh, re reacclimating myself to the internet. So, because a lot of things did change, but some of the stuff is still the same out there. And uh, went to bed, I think, 4:30 this morning. Got back up at about six, and then mm -hmm. laid in bed for about an hour because I didn't feel too well. Uh, the, the internet, the internet access. This is interesting. Uh, do you have internet access when you were in prison? No, we did not have any <coughs> internet access whatsoever for as far as inmates were concerned. So, actually, you did not have internet access for over four years. Correct. Okay, now, so how did the internet change? How, is the, how did it change well, in that you four know, years? Because your life's about change. Right. The, the physical, like, Internet Explorer, that changed a little bit. The, how everything is done, the security measures, uh, you got to type your password in five different times. Hotmail, I had to actually get my account uh, reset through a cell phone just to be able to get to my email account and it, it that was weird I've never experienced that before so did you remember your password four yeah. years later I had I had <laughs> I had all my passwords written down as soon as I got locked up I sent them out to my mom but I remember every single one of my passwords of the day so it was easier that to, to just know that I can get on there and friends are waiting on me you and, and back it, to this, uh, this morning when you woke up was it kind of like a I'll alert you. Just what were your thoughts this morning when you opened your eyes and well, I knew for an hour and a half of sleep, I knew where I was, and and it, it was kind of weird because I'm not used to a comfortable bed. It's been four years, and and the bed was extremely comfortable, and um, it took me a minute, and then I had a little bit of motion sickness because the lack of sleep and the lack of actual real food, and I finally got up, drank a cup of coffee, ate some peanut butter and toast, and you know started talking to friends and family and everybody was congratulating. Peanut butter and toast. What, do you, what would you usually eat in prison, like um, a normal morning? 
pancakes or French toast and not very well not very well cooked or eggs and biscuits or biscuits and gravy. Just it's got a set schedule. What do you want to do now, or is it too soon to say? What do you want to do now to reclaim your life? As as soon as possible, you know, I need to check on my driver's license, check on my job, make sure I can get all the basic stuff done because I need to I need to actually focus on working and, and being a productive person. What kind of job would you like to do? Or? Um, at this time, anything's open. You know, I, I'm I'm versatile in, in construction, repair, computers, cook. You know, I, I can do it all. Jonathan, do you want to write a book? And if you do, what would the title of that book be? I have discussed this with a few people, and, and an officer in the system actually gave me an idea for the name of the book. And I know my dad wants to write a book. My mom... We've mentioned it a couple times, and um, <laughs> I do want to write a book, and the name of the book is going to be called Innocence. And what does innocence mean? It means to you? It, it means everything. You, you the, I, I can't describe words for innocence. The fact that you have to be innocent of something means that somebody's thinking you're guilty of it in the first place, and you. You, you can't be always innocent and always guilty. It, there, there's you just have to be yourself, and and I don't I don't I don't understand why you have to be innocent or in this way guilty and then proven innocent. When you look back on your plight, in your nightmare, where did the system fail you? I want to say it was my original attorney. It, 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 Starting off from the beginning, I started off on the wrong foot with, with him and, and the way we decided to choose him and being not versed in, in how to find the correct attorney and, and being able to do the responsible thing. You know, I think we fa me and my father failed at that, at that part was not finding the correct attorney for this. What made him the wrong attorney? He just, he was inexperienced. He didn't know, he was at a loss with, with how to deal with situations he I remember during the preliminary hearing he came back and asked me did you know you sure this didn't happen they're changing the dates and he didn't know that they were changing the dates until the day of the preliminary hearing and that that was kind of weird for me and where and and where did the judge fail you I know that you don't want to find fault with the judge but it was a bench trial it was not a jury of your peers he was looking at the evidence and he was deciding that she was right and you were wrong. What do you want to say about that? Uh, as he said in the court, you know, he, he admitted he misread. And, and you know, I, I, I say people can make mistakes. And, and, you know, he can only make up for that, which he tried to. And, and I appreciate that. Do you think that by his ordering your immediate release, that that put a new pressure on the system to let you out, even though he may or may not have erred in ordering you to be released? I think so. I think, I think it pushed us to uh, be in light of, of the governor's office and the attorney general's office. That the line became, a man is sitting in prison even though the judge has ordered him released. Right. And, 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 the, and the governor took that in consideration. I appreciate his uh, expeditious what do you want to say about Ken Cuccinelli, the state attorney general? Uh, I don't have any comment on that. Jonathan, you know, you physically changed when you were in prison. You lost 100 pounds or more. Yes. How well, else did you change? Well, I have, a, I have an appreciation for attorneys. They, they, they're they there when when they need you, and they're somewhat in the way when they when you don't want them to be. And, and you know, you got to take the good with the bad. And, and to to appreciate everything in life as well is... is you know, every small thing, to be able to call somebody when you want to, to be able to eat what you want, to be able to go out in public whenever you want to. I mean, it's all the small things that, that you don't know that you lost until you actually lose them. You seem so forgiving. Is there any bitterness in you at all? There was at first. When uh, when Tom and Peggy and the investigator came to tell me, I was, I was, I was livid. I was pretty angry, but, you know, I look at it this way. At, at least she did come out to somebody and, and, and admit to it. Uh, at, at least she did that. I, I can say that I, I'm not bitter anymore. Have you it's, forgiven her? I'll, I'll never forgive her, but I'll never forget. When you were about to go to sleep last, early this morning, mm -hmm. 
What were the thoughts as you were laying in bed, in that comfortable bed? That this can't be real. This is, at the time, it was like, wow, you know. I have never, ever slept that soundly for an hour and a half in, in the last four years. Do you want to stay here on the peninsula even after your name is cleared and everything? No. Um, what are you, where my do you want to My plans uh, at this time were to go to North Carolina, live in my dad's house until all said and done. And then uh, I'm going to go back to Florida and uh, help my friend run his uh, business down there. Um, I, I noticed some emotion. What is the emotion for you, Ms. Woodruff? Um, I think that when uh, when I went to bed last night or this morning after um, we went and got John clothes, it was I I had to um, check with my friend and ask her, did we really go get him? Did did the, did it really happen? He's really out. Did. I'm I'm not dreaming that this is for real, so it it was so f it it was fun going through Walmart with him, and um, it's been a long time since he's been so irritating, <laughs> but I'm I'm so glad he's out and we did we had we had fun in Walmart. Hmm. Yeah. Peggy, Peggy, what would you, you like to say? Really I'm just so happy for Jonathan and his family and all the hard work that the Public Defender's Office has done for him and appreciative of all the press coverage. And you're, he's staying with you. He is. Yeah. What, is that, uh, that's a good bonding, a good bonding time, is that? Yes. We've had a lot of good talk last mm -hmm. night. We yeah. stayed up chatting most of the night, so. It's been good. What is your interpretation of how he is after four years of this nightmare? He's amazing to me, mm -hmm. truly. I mean, I think that he's going to be just fine. Okay, he's got, you know, worked through some things, and I think he'll be just fine. Very strong? Very strong. Very kind. And smart, and very, very, smart. very aware of the system. Yes. He's very educated on what's happened to him, what's happening to him now. Do you think he'd be a good candidate to be a public defender? Absolutely. Or a sentencing advocate. <laughs> Jonathan, have you thought about, you know, how you go about reconnecting with people? The, the internet's going to be a big help on that. Facebook, I mean, I've got my aunts and uncles, and, and they're all, they were all on this morning. My, my cousins, they just started getting on right when I was getting ready to leave to go uh, speak to the probation office. And, and that's going to be a big help, is to have friends that, that are on there. My sisters, of course, they're, they're, uh, they're waiting on me. They want me to come down now, but unfortunately I can't do that until everything's said and done. How long might it be, I guess, before everything is said and done? What's, what are we looking at for everything to clear the port? And, <clears throat> to, to have everything yes, it, it cleared completely? Yes, right. You're looking at it, months? It, I don't really want to comment on that in details. That, that's actually something that's still pending legally, so that, that's really something that's... Um, with the process with the writ of actual innocence. So I really don't want to comment on that. That is something that's still pending. Um, I, I do want to say, if I, if, if I'm, if I may, um, I really want to commend Anton Bell and the Commonwealth Attorney's Office here in Hampton. His professionalism um, and his work, and he contacted me with this and he came forward. And I also want to appreciate uh, what Governor McDonald did. Um, he said he was going to act quickly and he kept his word and he acted quickly. And um, on behalf of John and myself, uh, we really appreciate the way Governor McDonald has responded and, and acted in this manner. In the Mid-Atlantic Justice? Absolutely. I, I, Innocence absolutely. Project? Uh, Sean Armbrust uh, has been wonderful. I can't put into words how grateful I am for her and her help and the lawyers in her office, uh, and, and John feels the same way. Can you tell me a little bit about, so he's going to be out until Sunday, kind of the, the next steps as far as um, him traveling to North Carolina? He has to report to a probation officer. He's already checked in and reported to the probation office here um, locally. Uh, they've given him a pass to go to North Carolina to be with his father uh, for Thanksgiving. He'll return here on Sunday, um, and he has to report to the probation office down in North Carolina as well. He's done everything he has to do at this point to comply, and he intends to continue with that. When Richard Nixon was leaving the White House in disgrace, he looked at everyone gathered and he said, don't give in to the hate of your enemies because the hate will destroy you too. Hmm. What does that quote mean to you? 
it it, it tells it, it it means that, that you 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 got to keep hope and you got to keep alive you got to keep positive attitude because if you don't you just you're gonna you're gonna destroy yourself it, and and I've kept all the hope and I've kept talking to my attorney Pat and and I just got to talk to uh, Peggy in the last couple weeks and and I talked to my family and and they've known I'm innocent since since day one and. I, I've got to keep the the hope up because as long as I have the hope that, that, that one day I would either be out and one day I'd be innocent and one day everybody would know that then and I, I could keep that but the moment I gave up hope and I lost hope that that would happen then and it, it would devastate me. Jonathan what last night what, what were you able to bring with you? Your mom was mentioning a, a photo album that you had kept in, in the prison? Yes. Um, I that I had all my property, everything that I came out of prison with, I had in a box. I was ready to go. They what wore, was in there? Um, photo album, legal paperwork, uh, pair of shoes, shower shoes, uh, just an, uh, you know, a number of about books and address books, people that I had in, inside the system that I knew that I was supposed to write when I got out. Ten years from now, what do you tell a future child that you potentially have about this experience, about what has happened to you? I can say that it, that the good comes out of the bad, and and you got to keep fighting. You got to keep telling everybody that you, you know what's right, you know what's wrong, and and as long as somebody's there listening to you, that that, that you just got to keep going. Do you hope your case will be the impetus for any change here in Virginia in laws, the way cases are handled? I hope so. I I, I can't comment any further on that, but I do hope so that it, it does initially start a change at least. What, what do you want the change, uh, the change to be? I, I don't have any comment on that. Okay. I'll follow up to my last question about um, uh, when you, where you were answering the question you were talking about hope. You couldn't give up hope. Was there any time during this entire nightmare that you ordered giving up hope, that you had lost hope? No, and the reason why was because we were doing the um, identity development in in the system which is a sex offender program that they have there and uh, a probation officer had actually come and seen us and I talked to him specifically about my case and he he looked at it and looked at the you know just a, a general look at and with my charge and the way it was going that they could actually take me off of mandatory sex offender uh, registration and that still gave me a further hope that eventually Five years after the fact that I would have been able to uh, get rid of at least the most mandatory parts of it. Yeah, are you disappointed that you've had to file as a sexual offender? No, at this point I'm just happy to be out and 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 just just for them to let me out and Governor McDonald to do that and and I appreciate everything you know and I can't keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it, you know he did this. I was surprised that it, it it was this short and and to get a phone call personally from the governor and apologizing and, and telling me that I will be immediately released that night, it meant everything to me. And, and Governor McDonald, I, I can't say anymore. It's just... Really quick, because you who have been living this, when I was talking with you, thought hopefully by the end of the year, certainly by January 15th. Yeah, and, and we had we had talked about, you know, twice that, that what was I looking for, and I wasn't really sure. Uh, Mr. Pavick and Ms. Armburst at that time when we were going through the uh, the process of conditional pardon, nobody could give me specifics. They went. They didn't want to get my hopes up. To uh, all right, they give me a date, and the date passes, and now I'm disappointed. And and the fact that they they didn't want to tell me that, and I, I understand that they couldn't. And it, I wasn't expecting Tuesday night at 8:15 to be hugging my mom after they've only had it for a day, and that was pretty amazing. And I, and I thank Governor McDonald for that. Ma, your mom said that what you really enjoyed was taking a bath. I told, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best thing about taking a shower, taking a bath, sitting in, in, and not have to tell somebody tell you it's time to get out, or the shower to be on a timer, or, you know, uh, just go, somebody said, Peggy said, you know, just go take a shower. I don't care how long you're in there for. Just, you know, just, I had to wash, you know, all, I didn't have to shower the whole day. It was a long, excruciating day for me. Tuesday was 
nerve and the the you know the probation is going to be something I'm going to have to adjust to. I do have to report to somebody. The sex offender registration as soon as I'm done with that for the final time in North Carolina, I won't have to do that probably never again. So it's going to be a little bit of adjustment, not too much. Um, but I mean I mean like even daily life things like you're saying like no timer on the shower. Uh, I, you know, it's going to be weird uh, cuz like 5:30 they get they Blow a whistle, wake you up for count. 12, 30 in the afternoon, blow a whistle, wake you up for count. The same thing, five times a day, they blow a whistle for you to count. I think that it's going to go, once I get enough sleep, my body's going to, it's time to, no, it's not, it's not time to do that yet. So you, you're going to be appreciating, I guess, the, you know, the smaller things in life more? Or? Yeah, just to be able to, to get up when I want to and, and talk with my family without having to pay an excruciating amount of money to, to do that. It's almost $10 a phone call just to call down to Florida or North Carolina. Um, can I, can I have... Is uh, a tattoo I got in, in a jail, and I can't say who I got it from, how I got it, or anything like that. I have no comment any further on that. Um, <laughs> but I got a picture sent in from somebody, and this is actually a picture of an anime... That, that I watch, I watched regular before I got locked up, and it was his. It's a mask that goes across his face, and um, his his fight with with that it it, it meant perseverance to 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 keep going, and that that actual show kind of uh, taught me something, and and I learned from that, and and to to just keep fighting when you have to. Can you hold your arm out? Oh, sure. Um, the actual <laughs> character's name, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but I think I am. Uh, his name is Kurosaki Ichigo. It's a Japanese anime. It's called Bleach. And uh, the he went he goes through a struggle throughout the whole entire show, the series, and it's still continuing. And he's still fighting. His, his I think his last thing I saw was his girlfriend got kidnapped and he had to go after her. And so. Tell him what the ink is from. I, I, I won't you let can? him. He oh, said, sorry. I, I can tell him all off the record, but after the camera's okay. off. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Has he, does he have the same sense of humor? Has he, how has he changed? Um, hardened, not hardened? No, uh, not, not hardened. Um, positive? Smarter? He, yeah, yeah, everything. Um, <laughs> when, when, before he got arrested, before he went in, um, Jonathan was a jokester. And I think I sent pictures of him and his sisters. And you can see the sparkle in his eye because he was cracking a joke as they were taking the picture. And uh, he lost a little bit of that for a little while, but um, I, he, he's got his groove back, I think. He's, he's Last got night it. you proved that. Yeah, because um, we were constantly joking around and cutting up and laughing hmm. on the way back. So, yeah, I, I, I think that for a little while he lost it. He was a little dimmed. He had to, he had to lay low for a little while. People, people in the system couldn't know how happy he was, you know, even being where he was. So. Hmm. And, and, the, and the day that they, they had told me that Coast had, had recanted, it was, can't tell anybody. But we're going to tell you, but you just can't tell nobody. And, and I know my my Sully, he 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 knew, he knew because he walked in on me when I was in there. I was in the, I was mad, I was livid, I was crying, I was angry all at the same time, and he knew something. He he knew what was up, and eventually I told him the day I left because they actually called me for court transfer, and then everybody in the pod knew. Everybody knew that something's going on. And How did they treat you in jail when they knew you were going to get out and you've been wrongfully convicted? They one so many. <coughs> I had, I had, group. it's a, a pod of 86 individuals, but then you have a single cell that you go into with another person. Now, what about, what happened with that person? What was it like saying goodbye to him? It, it, it was, you know, he, he, he's a lifer. He's not getting out ever. And he said, I hope that, you know, that stuff that he's taught me and, and that, you know, I used to not be a very clean person. You know, uh, my mom can attest to that. I was... Oh, I'm a boy, you know. I, the boys do what they do. do. I'm gonna come in with muddy shoes, but you know. And and he's taught me a lot about you know, you dirty something up, clean it up. You know, I I wasn't. I was a mess. I was a wreck. And 
and uh, I'm taking away some good experiences from at least a, a few of the people that are in there. And um, one of the one of the people that was in there with me, he actually got out before I did, and he's living in Richmond. And, and uh, I wrote him a letter Sunday night and sent it out Monday because I didn't know I was getting out. And you know, I'm still here. You know, can you tell all the people that are in there I'm 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 doing okay? And uh, you know, I hope that I can hear from him soon. So it's obviously tomorrow is Thanksgiving. What are you looking forward to the most? We sure. spent the past Thanksgiving behind bars. You know, some real turkey. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they didn't give you real turkey at Thanksgiving at Greensville Correctional I, Center? I, I don't know if it was real turkey. I think it was processed. Uh, well, I know we had turkey uh, or chicken at one time and then ham, but I don't know. I, I, I can't say what it actually was, so. Thanksgiving with your family, has that sound good? Yes, most definitely. And and, and it couldn't happen except for, you know, Governor McDonald, you know, allowing it to and, and, and taking, you know, it, just doing it as quick as possible and, and looking at all the information that was available. And, and I, I'm very thankful that he, 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 he let me out for this. And you'll be there home to, to put up the decorations with your dad? I know that was real special for you, right? Yes, yes. Uh, it We put up, th we put up, the Christmas decorations right after Thanksgiving. So Saturday, Friday, Saturday, we'll be putting that up and uh, send pictures out to everybody. And it's going to be real, real bright over in Vail, North Carolina. You made a five by five cross with him, I guess, right before you went into prison, right? It's, it's, a, star. it's a star. I, 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 don't, I don't mean a cross. I meant a yeah, star. it's a, it's I a five. A it's a it's a five foot star, and we made that right. I mean, right after Thanksgiving, we got on it and. Uh, he said, how are you going to get it? Where are you going to put it at? Only put it up in the tree. How are you going to get it up there? I'm going to tie a rope to a wrench and throw it up there. And the first thing he did was tie it up, threw it up in the tree, and it was about 30, 40 feet up. And we hoisted it up and tied it off, and it was up there. His sister, uh, Amanda, helped put it up this year. That and the agreement was with the star that it would be up until you returned home? Right. And then we would put up the rest of the Christmas lights if I did return home or wait until next year. I mean, at now it's I'm going to put Christmas lights up and, and be with my dad and my stepmother, hopefully my mom and uh, and possibly Ben. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a nice sit down here. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you've done. Uh, Andy Fox, Todd, Velma, you know, we couldn't have done uh, anywhere near half of this without you guys. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I really do. And Peter DeJardin? I will pass it along. Yeah, he, he was he was actually there in in there in that. Yeah, where's, where's Peter? He's off today. Oh. Is he on so vacation or is he we, on assignment? Uh, I, He's on vacation. Okay. I was talking with Todd and we were joking. Well, he wasn't, but I was. <laughs> How thankful <laughs> that we are that this happened last night and not tonight. <laughs> yeah. It, and it really scared me because... There's only half a day for the uh, for state function, so I would only be able to get out at noon, and that would have been it, and I'd have been stuck there for over the weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate y'all so much. This is the most important quote. Um, there was a crossword puzzle that I was doing, and and actually it's not crossword, it's Sudoku, and there's actual quotes that run on there, and then. On the back side, there was a, a word scramble, and it says, if you're going through hell, keep on going. And that's, uh, I looked at that, and I said, wow. <laughs> I can't believe that. It, it's, and that's what we're doing. It's, we've got through the major part of it, I think. Where did you, you see did. that quote? You did it. Where did you see that quote? Um, I saw it in a, in, a, in a word scramble, and it's printable offline. I, I got it in, in, in a box somewhere. I can provide you with actually who said that as soon as I can. They said, what was it again? It, it, if you're going through hell, keep on going. You said we, but you did it. You were alone in there by yourself. You did it, John. No, I, 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 you had, I had you guys. I, I had the support. You, you know. survived and you did it. And I'm so glad that he remembered all those passwords <laughs> because I don't know what I did with something two days ago. <laughs> <laughs>